Well, welcome to chapter 4-1. We're going to investigate congruent figures. So, and the topics are congruent polygons, corresponding parts, and the third angle theorem. So, if we have two polygons that are um, congruent, then their corresponding parts are congruent. And the converse is true. If all of the con uh, corresponding parts are congruent, then the polygons are congruent. So, in this case, Let's look at what we're given. If the co uh, congruent polygons have congruent corresponding parts. Okay, so we're given that the two uh, polygons are congruent, which would mean that angle A is congruent to angle C, angle B is congruent to angle D, angle G is congruent to angle H, and angle E is congruent to angle F. And AB is the same length as CD, AE is the same length as CF, BG is the same length as DH, and GE is the same length as HF. If the two figures are congruent, then their corresponding parts are congruent. Okay, so let's see what it says on this page. If the corresponding parts of angle ABGE are congruent to the corresponding parts of angle H, excuse me, polygon CDHF, then the two polygons must be congruent. Okay, so if we're saying all these corresponding parts are congruent to all of those, then these two figures must be congruent. Okay? And talking about triangles. If the corresponding parts of triangle ABC are congruent to the corresponding parts of triangle DEF, then the two, ri two triangles must be congruent. Check the order out here. Look at A is first one mark for the angle for A. Notice it's between one mark for congruency on this side and three marks there. So then if you look at D, we should have the same circumstance there. One mark for A, one mark for D, angle D. A is on the s angle A contains the segments of one mark and three marks and look at D, one mark, three marks. See, this matches up perfectly. B. B is between one and two marks. Second letter, E, between one and two marks. It, it matches perfectly. So it's important not only to, design, to, to pay attention to the fact that all of the corresponding parts between this triangle are congruent with that triangle, therefore the triangles are congruent, but also check out the notation. A truly does correspond with D, and B corresponds with E, and C corresponds with F. Let's double check that. C, three marks between three and two, and F, three marks between three and two. It's a win. Everything has to be matching up in this order. If you choose to rewrite this as triangle C, A, B, then it still has to match up. C matches up with the letter F, therefore F is first. A matches up with D, so it's second. B matches up with E. Both of these are correct notations for the picture above. Now the third angle theorem. The third angle theorem is if you know the measures of these two angles, and they are congruent to those two angles, then this third missing angle has to, they have to be congruent. Let's put some numbers in there to make sense out of this. So if this is 115 and this is 30, the last time I checked, 115 and 30 is 145. And since the sum of the interior angle of the triangle is 180, then 180 minus 145. Nice handwriting. Boy, I think I made it even worse. Anyway, that's 35. This missing angle over here is 35. Now check out the same measures 115 and 30 are over in here. So therefore, if this, if this is 35, that's 35. So, and all of these then add up to 180. 
Okay, so I cleaned this, this up a little bit. So the idea is that if these three angles add up to 180, and you're given 115 and 30, and this is given 115 and 30, the third angles have to be congruent to each other because if this, these three angles add up to 180, then given those two, this has to be 35. Once again, if this is 115 and this is 30, this has to be 35. So if you have two triangles and you know that two of the interior angles are congruent to two other of the other triangles, interior angles, then the third angles must be congruent. I think that's, nope. Okay, so we've got to talk about corresponding parts. So look, if we're given that triangle ABC is congruent to XYZ, well then, you can look at the picture, AB, one mark, is congruent to XY, but you don't even have to pay attention to that because the picture, because look, AB is the first two letters. AB is congruent to the first two letters on this triangle, XY. Okay, let's go down. BC is the second two letters. That's what we're doing here, BC. So therefore, it's, that segment is congruent to YZ. You can double check in the picture. BC, two marks, YZ, done. Okay, let me erase that. Let's keep going. Okay, so CD, CD, C, CD, I don't even have a CD. That's ridiculous. Let's pause for a second. Okay, I fixed it. Okay, so we're talking about CA. Well, CA corresponds to, well, these two letters, X and Z. The question is what order do we put them in? C is between two marks and three marks. Z is between two and three. So Z is the letter that's first. Z, X. Nice handwriting. Let's try that again. That's better. Angle A corresponds to angle between one and three marks, one and three. Angle X. Angle B corresponds to, or is congruent to, B. One and two, one and two. It's Y, angle Y. And the only letter that's left is Z, so C is congruent to angle Z. If the two figures are congruent, then all their corresponding parts are congruent. Hey, we're done. Thank you for watching this.